Sunday, November the 22nd, 1992, Bishop Howard Smith came this evening and, and brought a set of questions regarding the Ernest and Santana W. Turley history. Hi, Tony. I must say right here that my wife Anne and I were happy to meet you, Tony, at Bradley and Jan's wedding at Marshall's and Ellen's. Your mother, uh, Rhoda, was a very lovely person. We thought a lot of her. We hope Anthony and their family felt the same. Since today is my brother Harold's 81st birthday, and he has just had a hip replacement, I would like to say a few things about him. He has always been my little brother I could look up to. A very dedicated LDS, Bishop of El Paso Ward. First Mission President of the West Mexican Mission, later State President of El Paso State. His older brother, E.V. Turley, was the first President of the El Paso State, and when he was released, he <coughs> became involved with the Boy Scout program. Later, Harold was made a regional representative of the Villahermosa Mission region in southeastern Mexico. Since housing was a problem, he purchased a large house trailer in El Paso and trailed it all the way to Villahermosa. This gave them, Harold and his wife, Irita, room to accommodate general authorities who frequently visited <coughs> the mission. He is presently hospitalized under the operation until it runs its course. His present assignment is patriarch. His wife, Irita, has always been a faithful, cooperative wife who also is talented, educated, and is an accomplished pianist. Her father, Orwell L. Pierce, was president of the Mexican Mission and later president of the Arizona Temple. There have been three Turley presidents of the West Mexican Mission and one in-law, uh, Milton Alvin Omni, and wife Lucille, our oldest daughter. Many return missionaries refer, refer to that mission as the Turley Mission. Harold E. Turley, George Lake Turley, and Richard Iron Turley. Richard's son, Jr., is in charge of the genealogy and family history department of the church. If you all remember this day, it's the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Much is still in the wind regarding who the assassin, who the assassin might have been. Now about your family ties. Your father, Anton, was probably the third child in the Ernest and Centena Turley family. He was some younger than I, but I know a lot about where he worked, etc. He had worked for the 3C Copper Company at Cananea Sonora. I worked there a few years after he left the mines. He was employed by a large company in South America and was a few years there. I lost track of him afterwards. I had Frank and Augusta Turley in my Sunday school class in 1927 after Anna and I moved back to Mexico. We had lived in Bisbee, Arizona a couple of years. I was mining for Phelps Dodge Corporation when I married Anna on the March the 10th, 1925. Bishop Pierce married us. He tied the knot. Uncle Ernest was a farmer, fruit grower, and had dairy cows. Part of their income was a result of the rich milk they had access to. Cheese making and butter always sold well, and while our fruit market had not been well developed, fruit sales were lucrative and much of it was, was bottled or sun-dried. The dried fruit sold well along with the cheese at surrounding mining camps. Ernest was a large, powerful man, six feet two or three inches in height, weighing over 200 pounds, and his hands were rough and strong, about the largest hands I ever shook. I remember him hanging from a timber on our wagon bridge, wielding a large double jack hammer pounding spikes into the timber as they built that most necessary bridge. He and his wife, Centena, had good voices and sang in the choir for years. She was president of the Relief Society. About Ernest's missionary service, I just cannot give you any details. Perhaps.
perhaps uh, Bernice, your father's sister, could enlighten you. She lives in Mesa. I know my father E.F. Turley say, uh, served in the Central States Mission in Ohio. While he was in the field, mother lost her four-year-old daughter Ida of pneumonia. She had this sad experience alone. She had been buried a week before word reached my father. Ernest and Santana's oldest was Ernest Carlisle. He and six other young men graduated from the Academy JSA in May 1919. Nathan Wetton, Edwin McClellan, Valentine Bentley, Vivian Bentley, Ernest Carlisle Turley, Edward Vernon Turley, and Clarence F. Turley. Six stags. No young ladies in our class. Joseph Smith Fish was the superintendent at that time. Carl, as he was called, and I decided to enroll at the ACU in Logan. So we set out for Utah. We were fortunate to hire out to the Utah Idaho Sugar Company at Fielding, Box Elder County in northern Utah. Carl landed a job interpreting for the company. They had many Mexican braceros on the job. I got in the irrigation crew. When fall arrived, we traveled to Logan and enrolled at ACU now called Utah State University. Peterson was president at that time. If I'm not mistaken, Ezra Taft Benson attended the college that year, but we never met. I want to say that Santana Wilson of Colonia Diaz was voted the most beautiful young lady of her day. The colonies had some beautiful young ladies. Even as a, even as a child, I enjoyed their beauty. My earliest recollection of the colonies was in 1905. I was five years old. A very heavy snowstorm hit our part of the state. We had 18 inches on the level. I remember grasping the windowsill and pulling myself up on tiptoes. I saw the snow piled up on the lawn. My father had been hunting in the mountains, and what a sight to see as he led his horse through the gate with a large buck deer tied behind the saddle. Our lot was filled with fruit trees and English walnut trees. This early snow and severe freeze killed all our nut trees. The weather warmed and it raised and it rained on the snow in the mountains, melting it. And did we have a flood? The largest flood in 100 years. Dublin's West Street was the east shore line of the Casas Grandes River. This river is formed by our river, the Piedras Verdes, and the San Miguel, which joined just below San Diego Ranch. Luis Terrazas' Hacienda. This man, Terrazas, owned one-third of the state of Chihuahua, with haciendas scattered over the state. He was reputed to be the cattle and horse king of the world. It was said when he sold a train load of steers, he asked what color they preferred. Believe it or not, he was a very, very rich man. He had come to this country from Spain with money, and when ranch rancheros, or ranchers, who had been driven out of their ranches by the Indians repeatedly, became discouraged and sold for a fraction of what the ranches and the livestock were really worth. It is said this is one way Terrazas obtained part of his land. However, he had been a governor of the state, of state and politicians often obtain advantages that one of less prestige might not enjoy. I'll just say our son, uh, Frederick E. Turley, was born in, Ron uh, in the Ronquillo Hospital in Cananea, Sonora, where I was employed by the 3C Copper Company, born March the 21st, 1946, on Benito Juarez's birthday. He grew up, finished school in the academy in JSA, and entered and enrolled in the Y, where he met his future wife, Gail Pullins. They have five living children. Their oldest son, Darren, is serving a mission in Spain. Rick and Gail and family are in Maracaibo, Venezuela, presiding over the Maracaibo, Venezuela mission. Angela, their oldest, is employed by a real estate firm in Provo, Utah. I. C. F. Turley attended school at the ACU one year, worked for Charles Red on the Cross H Ranch, punching cows and driving cows from La Salle to Thompson, Utah on the DNRG Railroad.
I later worked at the Bridger Jack Mine on the slopes of the LaSalle Mountains for a master products company out of Denver, Colorado. We were mining carnitite ore, uranium and vanadium. I married Anna Tenney, a beautiful young lady, 21 years of age, in El Paso, Texas, at the home of Thomas D. Roach. Bishop Arnold Pierce tied the knot. The marriage and reception all happened the same day. One gift was a rolling pin. The donor wrote, quote, When hubby comes home a proggin', take this little token to my regard and biff him on the noggin. We received very wonderful gifts that evening. My father and mother traveled from the colony to be present. My older brother saw to everything. He and his friend Bill Roach were responsible of getting us away from the party and took us to our hotel fooling a gang who had planned on chevroning us. In July 1912, because of danger from marauding revolutionists, the five colonists took refuge in the United States, taken by a train to El Paso, Texas. The government supplied refuge at a large lumber yard in East El Paso. Many colony people were given free train travel to points west and north, some looking for new homes, some to find employment. Many never returned to the colonies. Bishop Joseph C. Bentley finally received the church's consent to return, and he with other families began anew. Our family returned in 1914, having been gone two years and two months. People have been here ever, ever since, although they experienced many terrifying experiences. My grandfather, Isaac Turley, was an agriculturalist, a farmer, a fruit grower, and a good blacksmith. His father, my great-grandfather, Theodore Turley, was a gunsmith. He made two guns for the Prophet Joseph Smith, and at one time served as bodyguard to the Prophet. Grandfather Isaac Turley drove four animals, this is in 1895. Grandfather Isaac Turley drove four animals, two span of horses, pulling a large freight wagon to San Bernardino, California. Loaded this wagon to the nursery stock, apple, peach, pear, almond, English walnut, and name it. He was gone three months. As he reached the top of the hill where the, where the dugway began winding down to our town, he looked across the valley and saw wagons and people coming from the cemetery. Upon arrival home, <coughs> he heard the sad news. They had just buried his wife, Sarah. Can you imagine the shock he went through? A year ago, I had improved headstones made and installed at the head of Isaac Turley, Sarah Greenwood Turley, Clara Talton Turley, Edward F. Turley, Ida Iring Turley, Henry Iring, and Henry Iring, Jr. One offshoot of the, re of the rebel army knocked at the Romney home, this is in 1913. One offshoot of the uh, rebel army knocked at the Romney home and demanded breakfast. The ladies prepared him, prepared his eats, and, this, and, and then left and went upstairs and bolted the door. Renetta, the daughter of Emily Romney, jumped to the ground to go for help. The fall broke her arm. When this act was made known to the general, he ordered Sister Romney to identify the culprit. This was against her wish. She didn't want that man's blood on her hands. But they demanded it. They had two men very much alike put before her, and she identified the culprit. Sad but true, they stood him, blindfolded him, and he was shot down. Poor Sister Romney. It was devastating for her, and she disliked talking about it. This is one revolutionary happening. There are many, many more that could be told. Do you want to tell them anything of the reunion? Uh, which reunion? They're going to have a reunion, I believe, on the 28th of December. Um, I see him. Um, Tony, I can see by your questions that you're having a reunion in Mesa. 
My wife and I would love to be there because our granddaughter is being married on the 29th. But it's, it's impossible for us to go. We're just not able to make it. So you'll excuse us. We don't show up. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't be more specific about Uncle Ernest and Aunt Santana. I knew them very well. Of course, they left years ago and, and went to Mesa, Arizona. And from there, I think, uh, oh, they spread out. Some of the kids went to California, and some of them went north to Oregon, and so on and so forth. I completely lost track of them. But uh, I know Bernice is in, in Mesa now. And as I have already stated, you probably could get some information from her about Uncle Ernest's uh, missionary experiences. I just don't remember them. Thank you, Brother Turley. Brother and Sister Turley are sitting here side by side. Sister Turley's going to smile for us, too. It's, it's so nice that they would accommodate and answer these questions for you at this reunion. They're very special people. They're dear to our hearts here in Colonial Wars. And I'm sure you feel that it's really special to have them in your family relations also. So you folks have a happy and a special reunion. Thank you.